we assembled what we call a mass extinction chamber, the first of its kind, to figure out why forests disappeared across the planet 250 million years ago. The end Permian extinction was the largest mass extinction that happened in Earth's history. We don't know what caused it, and scientists have treated it like a massive murder mystery. We have to figure out where are the fingerprints to, say, the killer or the culprit. One of the few fingerprints we have in the fossil record are fossilized pollen grains that look malformed or mutated. These trees were giving this very clear message. There was something stressful going on. As malformed pollen grains become present, forests are disappearing. For our experiment, we took miniature bonsai conifers and exposed them to 12 times the amount of radiation experienced from the sun today for two months. Volcanologists and geologists had found that there were many large volcanoes erupting during the time of the extinction, releasing atmospheric pollutants that may have weakened the planet's ozone layer, which may have induced higher UV radiation. We thought we would find what we saw in the fossil record, and that was malformed pollen. While we did find that, we found something more troubling. It wasn't just that the pollen grains were messed up, it was that the actual seeds could never be produced to start with. Just because we have a few malformed pollen grains doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with the forest. But if they can't produce eggs and they can't produce seeds, the tree is basically walking dead evolutionarily. It can survive, but it can't leave offspring behind to continue leaving a healthy forest for the future. So we were seeing forest-wide sterility. So after we did this experiment for about two months, we brought trees back outside in the summer to see what would happen did they actually regain their ability to produce eggs and seeds? We didn't know. Well, it turned out the next year that many of the trees were able to produce seeds again. Laws that came to pass maybe 20 years ago that banned ozone-depleting compounds from entering the atmosphere really may have saved us in many ways. It really showed that we can make a difference if we all basically come together, look at the science, and try and problem solve. And it's this same sort of logic that may be able to help us with climate change today.